And when you see it. Yep. Hello, hello, hello. I think we are live. Please tune in and say hello if you are with us on Facebook on the Parent Support Network Facebook page. Welcome, welcome, welcome to you. I can't see you on Facebook at the moment, so please do drop a message and let me know if you are there. Super, super excited um, to be sharing with you today and so grateful that you've joined us on episode one of Parent Support Network TV show. And I, I'm here for so many reasons. So many people have been giving me nudges to come and do something like this. I know I do a lot on live on Facebook already, but I really wanted to do something on an ongoing basis. Hence why we're calling it a TV show because it's actually going to be 1 p.m. every Monday. So hopefully you can tune in live and if not, perhaps you can catch us on the replay. So for those people who might be tuning in either live or on the replay who maybe don't know me and my family story um, so well, I'm actually going to take the opportunity in episode one for you to get to know me and then my goal will be for me to get to know you because really my whole goal for doing this is to be able to serve you, to be able to help you with your, your parenting and your relationshiping. So um, I'm a primary school teacher by, by profession. I, I started teaching back in the very early 1980s, actually 1981. So yes, I'm pretty old. <laughs> and uh, and um, I, I love teaching. I loved helping children and relationshiping with children. I had my first son uh, seven and a half years prior to my second son, who is actually the, um, the topic of my six books that I've written. I've written six books about our journey um, from 2003 right through to 2013. And I just dropped my favorite one on the floor. And um, yeah, so basically he was born in 1993 and it was a stressful birth. And he came into this world with a huge bang. He was hyperactive from the get go. He was a busy baby, either, you know, if he wasn't feeding or sleeping, he was screaming. By the time he was a young toddler, it was quite evident that he was busier than the average. And being a teacher, of course, I understood, you know, how a lot of kids behaved, having already been a parent to one, uh, a, a quiet, compliant, cooperative child, then to have this little boy come along was quite, quite a shock to say the least. So between the age of three and four, we um, had him diagnosed by various practitioners from the, the GP to pediatrician to psychologists, psychiatrists, counsellors of all different types. And we saw many people in that, you know, um, bracket between age three and a half and four and a half. And what came back from, from most of those communications was that he had uh, something called ODD, which is oppositional defiance disorder together with ADHD and also childhood depression. So medication was actually recommended for our son when he was only three and a half years old. And to, and to top it off, <laughs> medication was also recommended for me because the doctor decided that because I was stressed as a parent, that I had depression as well. And she gave me medication for my depression, which I thought was quite interesting. So, um, so it's been a very, very interesting journey for our family. Uh, we started getting educated uh, in his early primary school years. We really started things like cleaning up his diet, you know, eliminating a lot of food additives, colors, preservatives, toxins, getting uh, the house just as clean and healthy as possible, um, working more on the body than the mind or the parenting or the relationshiping at that stage. And it helped somewhat. We had still had a bit of a roller coaster journey through his early years, but we did have some great results by changing his diet and, you know, looking at the physical side, implementing some supplementation, etc. However, when adolescence hit, oh my gosh, <laughs> the challenges that we had between three and five, absolutely 10 x and um, that's why my favourite book, um, the, my third book, The Revolting Child of Blessing in Disguise, actually tells our whole story of what happened from my pregnancy right through until he was 16. 
So between 13 and 16, they were probably the most traumatic, stressful, disconnected, you know, chaotic time in my life. Like it was really stressful on all of our relationships, on my relationship with my older son, Nathan, with my relationship with my younger son, who was challenging, my relationship with my husband, and all of our interconnected relationships were challenged to the max. Uh, what actually happened in our journey is that we met an amazing parenting mentor. And that's why I'm so passionate about this now, because if I can actually change a life, a family's life, the way that our beautiful angel Frank changed our life, then, you know, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. He impacted our life to the point where, you know, we had this child who was totally revolting. He was in trouble at school. He went to something like five childcare centres, two pri three primary schools, two high schools. He kept get asked, getting asked to leave or we felt compelled to change him from school to school to school. And he finally left school at age 15. Um, not so much through choice. <laughs> uh, it was kind of a forced thing that um, basically nobody wanted him, um, which is the sad truth. Anyway, there is a happy ending to this, and I'll talk more about it later. But I'd actually love to bring on my eldest son, Nathan. So Nathan is a naturopath, a herbalist, and a nutritionist. And I'll let him tell his story. But he's been practicing now for about 13 years, I believe. And uh, he became a naturopath because of our family's journey. So Nathan, I'll hand over to you. Nathan and I actually do a lot of work together. We do a lot of our parenting courses together. We've done a lot of you know, um, uh, interviews, et cetera, together. And Nathan is an incredible, not only an incredible human being, he's a great big brother. Uh, he and, and my youngest son now have great relationships. And um, he's doing some amazing work for families all over, all over the place. So just to share with us, Nathan, why you are now doing what you do. Thank you for the intro. Uh, I guess when, you know, you experience something from within, it's not just you looking from outside, uh, it does change your perspective. Uh, and I saw and felt how it changed my life growing up, having, you know, a sibling come in and all the attention directed onto them. And I was sort of just left to you know, do my own thing because I was quiet because I was quiet and I didn't really need to you know get the attention but you know psychologically I don't think um, I really realize or parents realize what that does to the other siblings uh, when the attention is completely taken off and put on the troublesome one but I saw the changes that my parents were going through to help rectify the situation and that really inspired me especially when they started getting results um, and our family finally became more harmonious, I wanted to help people do the same thing. I wanted to make a change in people's life um, that, you know, certain practitioners made in our life. So that's sort of, you know, why I took the direction to, you know, study for five and a half years at uni. Uh, and thankfully, I wound up under the wing of a holistic doctor and now work in the medical clinic with psychologists, doctors, kinesiologists, naturopaths, chiropractors. And you know, our mission is here to help serve and help people. So. I'm really grateful for to be also working with you know my mother um, who is the parenting strategist and so we can help more families like ours has helped. Absolutely thank you so much Nathan and so for anybody who might be listening in to us who is dealing with any sort of chaos stress disconnect and and I guess in the world that we're living in today it's more stressful than ever would you agree Nathan like in totally the last 18 months or so, like parenting and relationshiping at the very best of times is challenging and takes work. But with the stresses, you know, from, from various lockdowns, kids being homeschooled, parents being put under, you know, job or financial stress, kids not being able to mix and mingle with their friends at school, maybe having to wear masks now, you know, all sorts of stuff that is going on that is putting extra stress on, on our families. And, and I think, you know, that one of the, the, the most important things that we can remember as parents is that our relationships are the most important thing, particularly our relationships with our children and with each other in our home. I remember our mentor, Frank, telling us once, he said, do you know how gangs are formed? 
And my husband and I kind of looked at each other and we're like, um, no, like he was referring to gangs as in, you know, street kids in, you know, violent gangs, etc. And he said, when kids don't feel connected at home, when they don't have those heart connected relationships where there's mutual respect and, and cooperation and where they feel that they can, you know, are understood and, and, and listened to in the home, then they go out and seek that relationship elsewhere. They might seek it from their friends online or their, their physical friends asking them for advice or, or seeking, you know, relationship from them. Or they could actually end up being involved in some sort of gang because the gang makes them feel like they're a part of the family and then they can kind of get themselves into some strife from there. So it's really, really important that we as parents establish you know, that we are the gang, that we are the, the family that, you know, that we want them to be a part of and to be connected to and to feel loved and heard and recognised in positive ways. So, Nathan, if I could bring you back in again, as a practitioner, what do you see happening in the clinic, like from your patients coming in with either physical or emotional health challenges and how do you now see, because I know I've heard you say that you've really switched your thinking on your the way you practice now as a naturopath and a, as, a, as a practitioner. Um, you're looking at it beyond the physical now. So how, let me, let me phrase this, but how do you see the connection between family and relationships of a child to the health and wellness and well-being of your now adult patients? When you look back and you think on a broad scale, how can I help as many patients as possible from varying conditions? And you start to trace back, what are the main problems that lead to these conditions? And then you look at those problems and you're like, when did they start and how did they become vulnerable? Uh, whether it be gut issues, methylation problems, neurotransmitters, hormones, sleep, nervous system stress, how did they become problems? What drives people to like work crazy hours, put so much pressure on themselves, always think negative, always put themselves down? Where does all this come from? Surely if you had an amazing life and everything was going so well, you wouldn't just wake up one day and start talking negative to yourself or yelling at your kids for no reason. Uh, you wouldn't start working you know, twice as many hours just because you, know, you felt the need. So there's some inbuilt at some stage developed program in our subconscious that's driving our actions. According to uh, Dr. Belly Nelson and Joe Dispenza um, and Biology of Belief, um, these guys have really looked into the conscious mind and discovered that really we're all operating on 3% consciousness. 97% is unconscious, meaning most of the actions you do and the things that you do and think back and why do I say it or do that? It's unconscious. And it comes from our programming from the zero to seven or eight years old as a child. So parents may not realize the importance they have and the words that they say is so profound on a young developing mind. It's literally shaping their self-belief, self-worth, self-esteem, who they are, why they want to exist, where they believe they are in the world. And this then drives their, um, I guess, their support as they head into teenager years to deal with traumas and stress. And if they don't have a very good belief system built in, then all of a sudden when they hit that trauma, they don't know how to comprehend or deal with it. So their, their subconscious brings something up to protect them. It might shut down their empathy or shut down their some, some other emotion. And so then they go through life and they choose a certain job and they would do certain hours or they choose a certain partner and they repeat the same mistakes because they're on autopilot mode because somewhere along the line, their subconscious thought that was what was safe for them or that was a predetermined programming. And they've now arrived in my office from burnout, from overworking, from anxiety to depression, you name it. Yes, there's a physical component and biochemical and external influences, but a lot of it does stem back from childhood. Wow, and that that's so profound, isn't it? So it really places such importance on our role as a parent. So if your child is beyond the sort of zero to seven years and they might be 10 or 15 or even in their 20s, it's never too late 
to improve your relationships. But if you do have young children, it is so important to understand how this works. So over the coming um, weeks, I'm going to be sharing things with you, but I would also love for your feedback. What would you like to learn more about around parenting and relationships? It's my passion and purpose to be able to help you to really enjoy happier and healthier children and relationships. I'm intending to bring in some other guest speakers. So I want to thank Nathan for joining us today. I'm going to be bringing in some other guest speakers over the coming weeks who, um, who will be able to help you in all sorts of areas, uh, family, parenting and relationships. And I want to be here to answer the questions you want to know the answers to, not just the stuff that I think I'd like you to know or, you know, my experiences. So um, please do pop in the comments if you're listening in either live or replay some topics or some questions that you might have. Or if you've heard me speak before or you might have heard me talk about the nurtured heart approach, for example, if you'd like to know more about that, let me know so I'll know what to cover each week. So in the meantime, um, if you'd like to hear more from Nathan, actually today is a good day to be listening in because this evening um, he's actually joining us in our paid parenting course, Nurture Your Heart to Greatness. But I'm going to open that up to other people who might like to join in and listen uh, as Nathan uh, shares his wisdom around health and wellness, emotional and physical for parents and families. And also we'll probably do a Q&A with Nathan as well. So you really need to be on live for that. Uh, if you're interested in that, just pop some comments um, below and I will be sure to add the Zoom link. But from me today, I would like to say thank you for tuning in. If you would like to grab a free copy of my favourite book, The Revolting Child, A Blessing in Disguise, I'm going to pop the link for that below as well. And um, that is our whole story from my pregnancy right through until our son was 16. And as you can see, there's some pictures in there. There's some great stories in there. And basically, it's a very transparent and from the heart recall of, of our journey for, from all those years. So thank you so much to everybody who tuned in live today. I really do appreciate your support. If you're catching the replay, once again, thank you. And thank you, Nathan, um, for joining us on our first um, episode one of Parent Support Network TV. I look forward to catching you on the weeks uh, coming. And, uh, and answering the questions that, uh, that, that you're interested in. So that's it, Lily and Riki um, from Parent Support Network. And uh, thanks again, Nathan. Thank you very much.